Solving homophonic ciphers in software is incredibly easy with a brute force attack on the key. I have Python starter code available at the Black Chamber Patreon site for patrons at the higher tiers. With paper and pencil, it can be a little more work, but I'll introduce the three methods I know of for manually solving these. Placing a hint word based on patterns. Placing a hint word five letters long or longer. And solving without a hint if the message is long enough. First, if we have a hint word, check it for repeating letters. If the hint is a pattern word, maybe the pattern will appear in the cipher. It shouldn't, since the entire idea of homophonic substitution is to flatten out the letter distribution and reduce the number of patterns visible to us. But it can still be worth it to check. Using practice cipher HS1 from the homophonic introduction video, we have Dr. Zeus, it could be worse. Our hint is happens. It is a pattern word with a PP pair. We want to check for two identical numbers right next to each other. And we're lucky. 3636 leaps right out at us at the end of the top line. Placing our hint, we get H is 73, A is 87, P is 36 and 36, E is 26, N is 06, S is 79. From here, if we recover the four-letter keyword, we can immediately solve the crypt with that. To do this, we want to find four numbers, one each in the range 1 through 25, 26 to 50, 51 to 75, and 76 to 00. N is equal to 06 is in our first line. Number our letters 1 through 25, starting at A, remembering that I and J double up. We're going to use this as a table to find our line shifts. With numbering starting at 1, n is normally 13. In the cipher, n is 6. 13 minus 6 is equal to 7. This gives us the amount line 1 had been shifted by. However, because letter numbering starts at 1, we need to add 1 to the shift value in order to find our key letter. 7 plus 1 is 8 meaning that our keyword starts with the eighth letter in the normal alphabet, which is H. We can see that as we shifted the numbering, 01 aligned with H, which is another way to identify the key letter. Next, P is 36, putting it in our second line. In the table, I've numbered the letters from 26 to 50. Normally, P is 40. 40 minus 36 gives us a shift of 4. Adding 1 to that, we get 5. The fifth letter of the normal alphabet is E. This gives us E as our second key letter. Additionally, the start of the line numbering, 26, aligns with E. For our line 3 letter, we have H is equal to 73. In the table, H is normally 58. 58 minus 73 is minus 15. A negative number indicates that we wrapped around in the table. Add 25 to make it positive, 10. And add 1 for the offset, that gives us 11, and our key letter is L. Finally, A is 87. 76 minus 87 is minus 11. Add 25 to make it positive, to get a shift of 14. Add one more to get our key letter, and that's the 15th letter in the normal alphabet, P. No reason to do the shift animation again, and we have our keyword, help. Following the rules for decryption in video episode 10, we get our plain text back out. When something bad happens, you have three choices. You can either let it define you, let it destroy you, or you can let it strengthen you, Dr. Zeus. It may be a bit difficult to visualize what's happening with just arithmetic. One shortcut is to build a cipher wheel or slide for each range of letters, 1 through 25, 26 through 50, 51 through 75, and 76 to 00. Pick the letter you placed in your crib for that line of the table. In our case, for line 1, we had N is 6. 
position the slide or wheel so that n is over that number. Then just look for the starting number for the slide, that is 0, 1, and above that is our key letter. We had n is 6. Position the slide or wheel so that n is over that number. For the cipher, 0, 1 is h, giving our first key letter as h. And we're done with method 1. Okay, what happens if we don't have a pattern word for the hint, or the pattern doesn't appear in the cipher? HS2, Dr. Zeus, it doesn't have to be easy. Chance is a pattern word, but I've taken care to avoid assigning the same number to C twice. The weakness in homophonic here, though, is that each group of numbers is nothing more than a Caesar-shifted substitution. That can be seen from the animations. And the differences between letter positions are the same for the same alphabet, no matter how many times we shift it. That is, C is two letters away from A, regardless of how much we shift the alphabet. Further, with only four lines or alphabets, we will use at least one of the alphabets at least twice every five letters. Let's see how that works. First, get the differences for our hint word. On the first line of the table, we're looking at the letters C, H, A, N, and C. C is 3 and H is 8. That is, H is 5 letters to the right from C. So our first letter following C in column 1 is H, and the difference is 5. Our second letter after C is A. That's 2 letters to the left, or 25 minus 2 is 23 letters to the right. The third letter after C is N, and the difference is 13 minus 3 is 10. The fourth is C, and the difference is 0. The next line is for the letters H, A, N, C, and E. The third line is for A, N, C, and E. The fourth for N, C, and E. And the fifth for C and E. Plug in the differences for each of the letter pairs, and we have our table. Now, we go through the message in blocks of five, advancing one letter to the right at a time, looking for two numbers from the same range or key letter line. We start with 86, 02, 76, 39, and 53. 86 and 76 are in the same line. 86 minus 76 is 10, but we don't know if we have line wrapping. So we also have to consider 25 minus 10 is equal to 15. 76 is two letters away from 86, meaning we have to check the plus two column. Neither 10 or 15 appear in this column, so there's no match. Going to our next group of five letters, we have 02, 76, 39, 53, and 03. 02 and 03 are on the same line either 1 or 24 apart. They're four positions apart, so checking the plus 4 column, we can see that, again, there's no match. Shifting one more letter to the right, we have the group 76, 39, 53, 03, and 01. 03 and 01 are in the same line. We need to check the plus 1 column, for 3 minus 1 is equal to 2, or 25 minus 2 is equal to 23. There is a match between C and E. However, we've already shown that the letters C, H, A, and C aren't in the message yet. So the spacing between 0, 1 and 0, 3 here is just a coincidence. Switching to a shifted five-letter block format, where each line is a group of five letters at a time. Line 1, we had 86, 02, 76, 39, 53, 76 and 86 are in the same line. We need 10 or 15 in column 2. There's no match. Line 2, we've already checked this. We need 1 or 24 in column 4. No match. Line 3, we're looking for 23 or 2 in column 1. We have a match, but we've already rejected this because we don't have the rest of the word. Line 4, we ignore 0, 3, and 0, 1. We have 53 and 52 in the same line either 24 or 1 in column 3, no match. Line 5, no change. 
Line 6, we have 0, 3, and 24. For a spacing of 21 or 4 in column 4, no match. We also have 0, 1, and 24, giving us a spacing of 23 or 2 in column 3, no match. Column 7, no change. Column 8, we have 33 and 26, giving us a spacing of 7 or 18 in column 1. This could be a match for H and A, or a coincidence. Keep checking. Line 9, we have 24 and 9, giving us a spacing of 15 or 10 in column 3. This could be a match for C and N. Not a coincidence? Have we placed the hint in the plain text? Let's try assigning the hint as follows. C is 24, H is 33, A is 26, N is 09, C is 80, and E is 63. Line 1, the first C is 24, 3 minus 24 is minus 21, add 25 for a shift of 4, plus 1 for the offset gives the first key letter as letter 5 or E. Line 2, A is 26 which is the starting letter for the line, 26 through 50. So key letter 2 is A. Line 3, E is 63. 55 minus 63 is minus 8. Minus 8 plus 25 is a shift of 17. Plus 1 gives us key letter 18, S. Line 4, the second C is 80. 78 minus 80 is minus 2. Minus 2 plus 25 is a shift of 23. Plus 1 is the key letter 24, the letter Y. The key word is easy. Deciphering the message with the key, we get, if you get a chance, take it. If it changes your life, let it. Nobody said it'd be easy. They just promised it would be worth it. But it is easy. The final case is what happens if there's no hint. Remember, each group is Caesar shifted. If we do a frequency count for each group, we can do graph comparisons to the regular English distribution and try to recover the key that way, as described in the intro video for the Caesar shift cipher and demonstrated in several ciphers in fiction videos. HS4, Charles Schultz, Introspection. I used a random number generator for creating this cipher, so I'd like to think that the numbers from each line of the homophonic table are about 25% of the message. Actually, the groupings break down as 1 through 25 contains 26 letters. 26 through 50 has 22 letters. 51 to 75 with 23 letters. And 76 to 00, 00 got 31 letters. This irregularity in distribution of the original message can be expected to appear in the letter frequencies for each group, too. That is, one group may get fewer E's, and another could get all of the M's. Before I show the graph, I need to state that I found it easier to rename the numbers to the letters A through Z, where 0, 1, 26, 51, and 76 are all represented by A, 0, 2, 27, 52, and 77 by B, and so on. So the x-axis of the cipher graphs will be letters and not numbers. Doesn't really matter. Use whatever makes sense to you. Let's attack the largest group first, 76 to 00, zero with 31 letters. We have strong peaks at A, E, I, P, and W. It's tempting to say that we have a zero shift, except for those peaks at P and W. Let's try shifting the graph to the right four places. Here we have strong matches for A, E, I, N, O, and T. And it looks like keyword letter 4 is E. Note that A in the cipher graph matches E in the normal graph. For the 1 to 25 group, we have this table with strong peaks at Q, U, Y, and I. Note that there are four spaces from Q to U, and then four spaces to Y. This matches the spacing between A, E, and I in our normal English graph. Shifting our graph 10 positions to the right, we have matching peaks at A, E, I, O, and T. 
There aren't enough letters in the sample to say anything absolute about matching values, though. Note that A is equal to L here, so our first key letter is L. We really only need to pin down one more key letter, and then we might be able to simply guess at the keyword. The next largest group is 51 to 75, with 23 letters. Unfortunately, this is really messy. Let's just start shifting the graph right and see what pops out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's stop here. The data for A through E follows about the same pattern as for the first two graphs, and we have matching peaks at A, E, N, O, S, and T. Some of the other spikes look like they don't match, but those only represent one or two letters each out of a total of 23, so it doesn't take much to skew the results. The shift gives us A is equal to F. We currently have a keyword of L, something, F, E. The only English word that fits here is life, which is also highly promising. Let's skip checking the graph for 26 through 50, which you can do yourself if you like, and try deciphering the message with our potential keyword. Sometimes I lie awake at night and I ask, where have I gone wrong? Then a voice says to me, this is going to take more than one night. Charles Schultz. Got it right in one try. To recap, we have three methods available to us for pencil and paper solving of homophonic ciphers. We can try to place hint pattern words. If our hint word is at least five letters long, we can place it in the cipher based on the separation of letters within one or more number groups. Or we can treat the cipher as four separate Caesar shifts and recover the key one line at a time. Alternatively, we could have printed out the cipher with just the key L blank blank E and checked whether we could tease out any words from the plain text that would act as further hint words. I'll let you solve HS3 on your own with the methods at hand now, and if you need help, you can ask in the comments. That's all for now. See you at the next drop point. Got questions, comments, or suggestions? Leave them in the comments below. Enjoyed this video? Then I encourage you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. If you want to show further support, you can join us over at the Black Chamber Patreon page, where you can get access to more how-to videos and PDFs on solving the cipher types covered here, additional crypts to solve, and more. Links pinned in the comments below. See you at the next drop point.